Last Wednesday on my one and only official Instagram profile, I asked you to ask me anything, and we are going to go through your questions together right now. Hello, I'm Crypto Casey, and welcome to another episode of AMA Monday, where we go through your questions you submit on my Instagram story every Wednesday. If you like this sort of format, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Let's hit it. Please be sure to check out our sponsors, Morales Money, CoinLedger, and Tangent Wallet. Know when to buy, sell, and hold crypto with the Moneyline tool we've been using for several months now to monitor bullish and bearish trends in the market, as well as find altcoin gems before they pump with Morales Money, which is a whopping 75% off for a limited time using the link below. Get your crypto taxes done quickly and easily in three simple steps with CoinLedger, a platform we can use for free to see an overview of our gains and losses, as well as download our tax forms we need to file ourselves, upload to TurboTax, or hand off to our accountant like Lorenzo CPA, my accountant, you can book a free call with in the links below and invest in your very own cold storage hardware wallet like Tangent Wallet. It's a size of credit card, multi-currency, multi-chain, and it's by far the easiest crypto wallet to set up and use on the market right now. It's extremely affordable, and for a limited time, they've got their special edition white to check out. So scroll down and use links below to access the correct and official sites, as well as redeem any special offers they have for us. Sweet. All right, this first batch of questions has to do with price predictions. Please note, none of this is financial advice. These are just my random wild guesses. So make sure to let me know your random wild guesses in the comments below. Will Bitcoin hit 200K in 2024? Last week, I said my peak price prediction for Bitcoin this cycle was $169,420. So I'm going to stick with that. Also, some of you ask, what makes you think Bitcoin will reach $169,000? In the past few videos, we discussed why in more detail. So the short answer is the decreasing supply of Bitcoin available due to increasing demand from spot Bitcoin ETFs and the upcoming halving event that will further decrease the supply of new Bitcoin entering to circulation by half will cause the price to increase. Why so specific about top Bitcoin price? Why not round up to 170K? 69,420 is a meme value, which you can look up why on the internet. So since that was basically the previous all time high, I just added 100K on top of it for my prediction. Random prediction, when will the peak of this bull run occur? Mark your calendars, folks, November 17th, 2024. Why? Just a random wild guess. Also, as we've discussed a few times, this cycle may be more compressed than previous cycles, given all the big institutional interest we have never had in the crypto markets before. What's the lowest you think Bitcoin could go before a big pump? How low do you think Bitcoin could be before the halving? How likely is it that Bitcoin never gets this low again? even in a bear market. I'm going to stick with my answer from last week, $60,000. And unless we experience some crazy black swan event, my random wild, overly optimistic guess is we don't see a sub 60K Bitcoin ever again. And I just want to emphasize the overly optimistic aspect because as we can see just a few days ago, we did flash crash to and bounce back from $60,800 which means so far the 60K support level is holding. Should we keep buying Bitcoin even with the price at 67K? If Bitcoin is your main play in crypto and you are planning to hold in the long term, sure. Like we've discussed, Bitcoin is most likely to do a two or three X this cycle, if history rhymes. Also noting the much larger market cap than previous cycles, meaning though it has increased by much larger multiples in the past, it may not in this and future cycles. If the stock market crashes, do you think Bitcoin will crash too or increase? It depends on the reason the stock market crashes. Crypto has decoupled from the stock market before. So if let's say we have a ton of bank failures all at once, that would probably cause the stock market to crash, while Bitcoin would more likely increase since it's separate from the banking system. If the stock market crashed due to a recession, it would probably take Bitcoin down with it. Again, my random wild guess, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What price do you see ETH in December, 2024? Since I'm going with a Bitcoin peak in November, 2024, I'll stick with last week's peak Ethereum price prediction of $16,420. Do you think Solana can flip Ethereum? It's possible maybe at some point in the future, far off future. However, I think it's more likely that Ethereum flips Bitcoin first and Solana potentially never flips Ethereum. We shall see. What price would flip ETH bearish? According to the handy dandy money line indicator, on the weekly, Ether would flip into a bearish trend if it falls below this $2,800 price point. How can you tell when a coin flips bullish or bearish? I use the money line indicator, which you can get for a 75% off discount using the link below for a limited time. And here's how simple it is to tell. On trading view with the money line indicator enabled, on a weekly time frame, which tends to be the most accurate, when the price falls below this yellow bullish line, 
it flips into a bearish trend. And when the price rises above this red bearish line, it flips into a bullish trend. Sometimes we have sideways fake outs, like you can see here from last September. So it's crucial to pay close attention when the trend flips, because when it flips bearish, it's usually a good time to sell. And when it flips bullish, it's usually a good time to consider buying. Will you be sharing with us your subs when crypto is starting its long bear cycle again? Of course. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow me on my only correct and official social media accounts listed below to stay up to date on all the latest trend changes. Cool. The next batch of questions has to do with market cycles. How come Bitcoin hit all time high and Cardano is still 40% from all time high? As we've discussed on the channel, crypto market cycles happen in waves. First, Bitcoin hits an all-time high, then Ether hits an all-time high, then larger market cap coins like Cardano hit, and finally, medium and smaller cap coins hit. So get ready for altcoin season. Will altcoin season be delayed if the Fed doesn't cut rates? I don't think so. The market obviously doesn't care right now as Bitcoin is hitting all-time highs and some altcoins have already started flying over the past few months despite increasing rates and pauses without rate cuts. Is it true that it takes 500 plus days after the halving for the price to skyrocket? Bull run usually after six to seven months after the halving, right? Would it probably last until October 2025? Sure. As we can see on this chart, the first all-time high hit 357 days after the halving. Next was 511 days after, then 546 days. And using this historical data, some predict this time around will take about 570 days after the halving. However, I'm going out on a limb and randomly wildly guessing we have a more compressed cycle this time around, as we already discussed. We shall see. Next up, we have a few questions about trading. Do you swing trade? No. Do you only do spot trading or do you trade on margin daily? I don't trade daily and I have never traded on margin and do not recommend it unless you are a super experienced trading expert that can afford to lose a lot of money very quickly. Do you personally execute your trades or do you use a trading firm? I buy and sell all the crypto myself. What is the best trading platform for beginners? I've done step-by-step -step tutorials on how to use both Coinbase Advanced and Kraken Pro, which you can check out in these video guides for beginners by clicking on the link above. Those are for more advanced trading. As far as just simply buying and selling crypto, you can check out the list of my recommended exchanges below. And as always, I highly recommend having accounts with as many exchanges, reputable exchanges as possible, so we have as many options as possible to buy, sell, and trade crypto in crazy bull markets. Nice. Next up, we have some questions about crypto wallets. Is it safe to use Kraken without separate wallets? Exchanges are not wallets. Exchanges are tools to exchange fiat to crypto, crypto to crypto, and crypto to fiat. I do not recommend keeping any crypto on any exchanges long term, as they are one, like I said, not wallets, two, they are targets for hackers, three, they can encounter regulatory issues, and four, just about anything can happen. They can fail, freeze funds, go bankrupt, etc., and we can lose all of our funds. Is Exodus Wallet a good cold wallet to use? Exodus is not a cold wallet. It's actually a hot wallet. Cold wallets generate our wallet's private keys on offline devices that never connect to the internet, and hot wallets generate our private keys on online devices like cell phones and computers via software applications like Exodus. And if you'd like to learn more about how crypto wallets work, check out this video guide for beginners by clicking on the link above. As far as Exodus goes as a hot wallet, I wouldn't recommend it at this time. Back in January of this year, Kapersky Labs discovered a new malware that exploits a vulnerability in macOS systems to replace Exodus and Bitcoin wallets with infected versions. So I'd say stick with cold storage options and make sure you are using malware protection on all of your devices you use to interact with crypto, like Malwarebytes, in order to protect yourself from hackers and malware. Which cold storage hardware wallet do you use? Is it Tandrum as sponsored in your videos? Still use Ledger Wallet? I use a mix of hardware wallets like Tangems, Ledgers, Trezors, BC Vaults. You can check them all out by using the links below. With Ledger, I haven't done anything with it since the latest updates with the private key storage options. However, new devices are in the works that won't have those features from what I've heard. We shall see. Are any Ledgers safe from backdoor access? If you didn't update the Ledger, then it doesn't have that capability as far as I understand it. Again, I think Ledger is working on new devices that won't have these features. I'll keep you updated as I learn more from them. How many wallets do you suggest if we have a 100k portfolio? This is more of a personal preference question. Honestly, whatever makes you feel the most comfortable and comfortable without overcomplicating it. So I'd say three to four different ones to diversify risk. Ledger Nano X, am I able to move crypto directly from Coinbase or do I need to put it in a Coinbase wallet? You can move directly from Ledger to the Coinbase exchange. Just use the receive buttons on Coinbase copy the corresponding crypto address, 
Then on Ledger Live with the send function, paste the address into the to or recipient field. Double and triple check to make sure everything looks good and send it. I always recommend sending a small amount to make sure everything works before sending large amounts. If you have crypto in a Tandrum wallet, are you able to sell it from the platform? Can you use Tandrum as a trading platform? Yes, you can buy, sell, and swap on the Tandrum app. If you'd like me to make a step-by-step -step video guide on how to use those features, let me know in the comments below. I bought some Arbitrum and transferred it to Tandrum. The amount is on the blockchain. Tandrum says zero. Make sure your Tandrum wallet app is up to date. Make sure you've added the Arbitrum token with the correct network because there is an Ethereum version as well as native Arbitrum version. If none of that works on the Tandrum app and settings, you can start a chat with their support team about it and they'll help you out. Tandrum wallet. Why are my crypto coins volatile when I store profits in it? How can I make it a cold wallet? So Tandrum is a cold storage hardware wallet. And the reason the cryptocurrency values change is because they are similar to stocks on the stock market and that their values constantly change depending on supply and demand. The amount of cryptocurrencies you have on the wallet won't change, but the value of them will constantly change regardless of where you store them. For example, if you have 10 coins that are worth $1 each, then the total value is $10. However, if the price per token increases to $2, then those same 10 tokens will show as being worth $20 in value. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know in the comments below. Cold Wallet, a crypto custody service or ETF for long-term hodlers. There are pros and cons with each option. With a cold wallet, you completely own and control your digital assets. However, there is some technical aspects we need to learn and understand in order to avoid losing funds from user error, scammers, or similar. Custody services I'd be careful with because there are a lot of scammers that pretend to be custody services. And even if they are legitimate, there are risks involved depending on how they are storing the crypto and how the company manages everything in general. And an ETF is definitely the easiest to get into from a user interface perspective. However, you won't completely own and control the digital assets. They can be frozen or seized by the government at any time. You won't be able to transfer the Bitcoin to your own wallet. And I think they are trying to impose an unfair attack situation for when people want to sell. I'll need to look more into that though. At the end of the day, I think all crypto investors should get a cold storage hardware wallet. Learn how it works and practice using it, even if you opt for another storage option like a legitimate credible custody service or an ETF. It may seem daunting to set up and use a crypto wallet, but it's actually a lot easier than you think. So I'm going to show you how to set up a wallet in less than 60 seconds and then send crypto to it. Also in less than 60 seconds, with Tandrum Wallet. Opening the box, here we have the three cards. Next, installing the correct and official Tandrum mobile app on our phones and opening the app, tap scan card and touch one of the cards to your phone like so. Next, click create wallet and tap the card to your phone again. Nice, now we have a crypto wallet. Let's create backups of it. Tap backup now, and then tap add a backup card, and tap the second card to your phone. Cool. Now tap add a backup card again, and tap the third card to your phone. Then tap finalize the backup process, and enter an access code to secure your wallet. Re-enter the access code to verify it, and then scan the primary card ending in the corresponding numbers on the screen. That matches the card, holding it up to your phone until the operation is complete. Then repeat this process for the two backup cards. That's it. It's configured and ready to use. So now let's move some Bitcoin we have from the Coinbase exchange together to our Tangent wallet in less than 60 seconds. Open the Tangent app, tap scan card, scan the card, enter your access code, scan the card again. And from here on the dashboard, press and hold Bitcoin, then tap copy address. Next, open the Coinbase exchange app, tap the send button, tap Bitcoin, Paste the Tandrum Bitcoin wallet address into the to field and tap continue. Enter the amount of Bitcoin we want to send. I always recommend sending a small amount to test to make sure everything is good to go. In this case, we are sending $100 worth of Bitcoin. Tap preview, then tap continue. Make sure everything looks good, then tap send now. And it's on its way. In a few minutes or so, we will open our Tandrum app and see the $100 worth of Bitcoin we sent that we now completely own and control. Repeat the same process for any other cryptocurrency by copying the corresponding address on Tandrum Wallet. Also making sure we select the right network. Like for example, with Tether, there are many other available networks like Ethereum versus BNB Smart Chain versus Solana and more. Then repeat the same similar process on any other exchange you may have crypto on by using the send function pasting the address in the recipient field, and checking to make sure everything looks good before sending. The process is actually much easier and simpler than most people new to crypto think, and it's a lot like riding a bike. I can try to explain how to ride a bike, show you how to ride a bike, you can read about riding a bike, however, at the end of the day, you need to get on the bike and ride it for yourself to learn. 
So start practicing transferring to and from different exchanges and wallets to prepare for this face melting bull cycle so you can take profits and potentially change your life with some nice gains. If you want to watch a full video on how to use Tandrum, check out this video guide by clicking on the link above and scroll down and use links below for a nice discount and to access Tandrum's correct and official site. Sweet. So there were a lot more questions, so I'm going to split up this AMA into two videos. If you didn't see your question in this one, stay tuned for the second half of this week's AMA. So this was the second episode of AMA Monday. And if you liked it and want me to keep doing them, let me know in the comments below. And to ask some questions for the next episode, look out for my Instagram story on Wednesday. Awesome. So if you'd like to increase your chances of making gains by buying and selling altcoins at the right time using the money line, check out this video. If you would like to learn the best proven strategy in crypto, which is how to DCA dollar cost average into the crypto markets, check out this video. And to get your taxes done with CoinLedger, click on the link on the screen. Like and subscribe for more. Be safe out there.